Good morning and God bless you on this Monday morning. God bless you as you start the third week of Advent, the week of joy. And we focus on the joy that Jesus came to give to this world and to bring into our hearts and our lives. And if there's ever been a time, I think of all that we've been through this year, joy is a wonderful thing to talk about. Because we've been reminded as this year has gone on that there are so many things that we take happiness in and that we've delighted in that have been taken from us. And if nothing else, it's been re we've been reminded that so much of the things that we delight in, that we take joy in, are things that really are temporary and things that are very fragile. And I think of one of the biblical writers who had the most to say about joy and re rejoicing, and that's David. You know, David as a boy when he was a shepherd, David as a young man as he wrote songs and hymns to the Lord, David as a young man who was a warrior who would become king. Throughout his life, in good times and, his ba and in bad, he prayed and he worshiped the Lord and he wrote songs to the Lord. But one of the three phrase, the phrases that is over and over repeated is rejoicing in the Lord that he found his delight in the Lord. And I want you to hear something that he wrote in Psalm 16, verses five through eight. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me even at night, my heart, he instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. And you hear that confidence. And I love the way he says, my, you have put boundary lines that have been given in pleasant places. In other words, boundaries for our life. And I think so often in today's world, we tend to think that rules and boundaries are, are a bad thing. But when we get to know ourselves, especially when we get to know ourselves in light of Jesus and his word, we're reminded that doing what is right and what is good doesn't exactly come naturally to us. And when we begin to learn that we need to be taught what is true and what is right, and in a world where so many people now question what is even true, is there even such a thing as truth? To learn to delight in God, to learn to delight in something that maybe at one point in our lives we rebelled against. This is something that David learned at a very young age. If you, he learned to take his delight in, for his heart in the Lord, nothing in the world could take it away. And I want to read to you one of his other Psalms from Psalm 19, starting in verse seven through 14. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned, in keeping them, there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgressions. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And you hear again that how David learned to find joy and to find delight in the laws and the commandments of God. And again, it's kind of a strange thing. But you know, we teach ourselves what to delight in and what to scorn. I'm going to confess a little something. When I was a kid, 
uh, fairly young, I, I started messing around drinking beer. And at first, I got to confess, I hated it. Didn't like the taste at all. But my friends all thought it was cool. And I taught myself, eventually, to delight in beer. I wonder if the same thing is true when we hear about the rules and the commandments of God. There are times at first that they seem restrictive, at times that they keep us from doing what we want to do. But when we instruct our heart to delight in what is right, to delight in what is true, we begin to realize that there is a source of wisdom and guidance and counsel that we don't need to pay to go to a therapist to get. We can get it simply by reading the words of God that have been recorded for us and handed on from generation to generation. And I think of how Jesus put it. You know, it says in the Gospel of John what many consider John's Christmas story, where John declares not the stories about shepherds and a manger, but he declares who exactly it was that was born into this world. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. He declares these things about Jesus. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. And then a little bit later, he says, for the law was given through Moses Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And as much as David delighted in the law of the Lord, it is Jesus who brings together this perfect union of grace that loves us, that welcomes us, that washes away our sins, and truth that in Jesus' own words, truth that sets us free, truth that transforms our hearts and our minds and, and the life we live in response to his gospel. So I invite you to take this week and think about the question, what do you delight in? What gives joy to your heart? And where does God fit into that? Do you delight in the Lord? Do you know how to rejoice in the commands and the statutes of the Lord? Do you, Lord, know how to give thanks to God for his truth that can set you free? Remember, Jesus is the one who loves you and came full of grace and truth for you and for me. God bless you. Amen.